Good morning, you guys. Hi, Eloise. Hello. We're just trying to get everybody in here and here comes Miss Mac to help us out. So just give me a few minutes. We might have a big group. Hi, Miss Mac. Hey, Charlie, how are you? Well, this is going to be fun. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> okay, so are you letting all of them in or can I? I'll switch over to you now. I was waiting for you to do that. Um, give us about two minutes, you guys. We'll let everybody in and then we'll get going here. You want everybody on video? Um, it's preferred. It will help them. Uh, uh, webcam on the. That's okay if you don't have a camera on there. All right, Miss Mac, you are now the Whoa. host. Hey. Somehow we got to keep it on me though, right? As the big screen. Yeah. All right. Which view do we want? Not a clue. Are you guys looking at a grid right now? Um, I put it on like pinned view, so it should just be on yours, Miss Murphy. Okay. Is that what everyone's got is me? Because I have the whiteboard, not Miss Mac. And I can't see. I'm mean, gonna mine too. Can you guys see the whole whiteboard behind me? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Ms. Mack, you're still working on invites? Uh, um, yeah, I don't have any. Now, Eloise, when she talked, did it go to her? Um, no, because I pinned yours, so it should just stay as yours. All right, so the goal there then, guys, we're gonna take Eloise's recommendation and you're gonna be able to see the whiteboard if you stay pinned on me as we go, okay? Um, and I'm my husband's a teacher too, and I'm using his setup today, so we'll see how we do. Can you guys see the words on the board here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, so what we're gonna to do today is we are gonna start dive tables. Um, at the end of class, we will stay on for anyone that wants to talk to us, has questions for us, wants to check in, but we want to put the material at the front of the class today, okay? Uh, Miss Mack is going to kind of be there kind of watching, so if there's something on chat you want to write that you like don't understand or repeat, um, if you will just go ahead and have her do that. Um, I don't mind the mics being open as long as we can kind of hear, you know, like, what I'm doing and what's going on, that's okay too. Um, if it's, we get a lot of feedback, she'll just kind of shut them down if she needs to. All right. The first thing I want to do is I want you to have out your dive table definition worksheet. Um, and as a reminder, we are recording this. So if you don't want to take notes and you just want to kind of follow and do, but then later you're like, oh shoot, I want to go back, I will be uploading today's video onto there. So you will get it. Um, okay, so starting with our dive table definitions on the first page, a few of them I'm gonna blow through, but some of them will be very helpful for you to understand as we go and actually do dive planning today, all right? So the first one up there was ascent rate. We know that to be uh, one foot per second or 60 feet per, per minute. Um, so that's really all you would have there on that one. The next one is safety stop. A safety stop should, as a conservative diver, occur on every dive. That's our recommendation. 
Um, the PADI rule, of course, has to do with if you are in the gray or if you are over 100 feet. Uh, but we're going to ask you to always remember when diving to do a three minute safety stop at 15 feet. So that would be what you would have on that one. On the RDP, the Recreational Dive Planner, um, this is actually, um, however you're going to do it, there are tables. You can use your dive computer. Um, we're going to be working off of the tables today, but there's also little small computers called ERDPs. So this is basically the mechanism of which we're going to find out the information we're talking about today. The next one is dive profile, and that's what we're going to work on today is learning how to um, include all of the information we need and where to put that information. Um, and that's on the dive profile itself. So really what that is is a graphical drawing or representation of all the facts of that dive. And we've talked to you before about the need for a log book. Um, in your lifetime, you should literally record every single dive you ever do. Before Ms. Mack or I could take the instructor exam, we had to have 100 dives logged. And in our exam, they literally said, well, open up your book and show me dive number 78. And we had to have that. Um, as you've learned from both of us, diving is expensive. And to have to go back and do those dives again, um, I don't know if Ms. Mack has shared with her class, but um, she had to get up to speed really fast to be ready to take the test on numbers of dives. And so she went on this trip to Bonaire where she did like 22 dives in one week. Uh, that's a lot, but it got her to the point where she could sit for the instructor exam. So it was very important. So this is what we're talking about on a dive profile. All right, now we're gonna start getting some of the information that are rules and whatnot. So I'm gonna hold up the card and see if we can use it a little bit as we go. Okay, sorry, I dropped my pen cap. Um, can we see that at all? It doesn't matter if you can see the numbers. All right, so yes. our, yeah, you're okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. With our dive table, um, there is different pieces of information on here. And what I try to get my students to always remember is do not memorize the dive table. Remember that there is information on there, like there's some keys on this side. All right, so if you look to the side that says start, and you might have the paper copy tables or you might have the hard one um, that you got with your book packet. Either one is the same right now. So if you have the uh, black and gray that we attached today, that's fine too. But off to the side, our start side literally says start at the top. And partway down, I think it might be on the back side of your sheet even. Uh, no, bottom of the first side was the word depth. And so underneath start, you see depth. And if you get one of these online, there's two versions. There's a metric version they use in Europe, which is meters. And then we have the feet version. So that is called imperial. So you will wanna make sure when you're using a table that it's in feet. And so you can disregard any problems you see in the book or a problem you'd see on the test where they talk about meters, just read the feet. It's giving the equivalent, okay? But right below that, I brought that up right now um, because we have the decompression stop as one of the next terms. And a decompression stop we learned two weeks ago is on the back of the car. And that is if you exceed what your limits allow you to do. So that was this area um, right down here where it says emergency decompression. Again, I flipped over to the back. And that is where if you go beyond the limits of the dive, it's gonna have you stay at 15 feet longer. Again, don't ever try and memorize those rules because you'll make a mistake. Instead, listen to your computer beeping at you underwater. It'll tell you what to do. Um, or know these before you go diving, what you do if you're under five minutes and what you do if you're over five minutes. So that would be the decompression stop that we are talking about next on the terms. Um, I've already covered depth and that is how deep you are diving. So to get going on this little profile I drew here, which is really nothing more than like a, a kind of a U with some wings on it, if you will, this would be a dive profile for one single dive. All right. And on this one, because it's your first dive of the day, 
There is no information that goes here. That's one of our most common mistakes when you guys plan your own dives, is you try and throw something up there. Well, we're assuming it's your first dive of the day, and so there should be nothing up there. Immediately the dogs stay out of the gravel. Right here is where we are gonna put the depth. Nate, so we're on the left side of it, over here, and depth will go here, and that will be in terms of feet. So I'm already starting to show you where you would put information to plan your dive. The depth is simply how deep in the water you are going. And that is, you know, obviously below the actual surface, okay? All right, next we have ABT, which was actual bottom time. This would be like on a clock. So I always like to consider clock time here. Um, this is real time. If your head goes underwater at eight o'clock and your head returns above the water at 8.33, then you would have been on a 33 minute dive. That would be the actual bottom time. Now we're gonna talk about that safety stop thing. Sometimes people, you'll see that safety stop thrown right up here. But in all reality, that's just a reminder. That is already added in to our actual bottom times. It is already there. Okay. All right, our next one that we have on there, now we move to the back side of the sheet. Um, I'll stop for a second. Does anyone have any questions on the definitions on the front side? Good to go. All right. And again, use that chat feature too, because you can send those to Miss Mack and she can help pipe them to me if we need also, okay? All right, so next we have the NDL, which is the no decompression limit. And this was a confusing question on the quiz that we gave you the other day, question number 16. And we think it's kind of confusing because it's kind of a poorly written question. It kind of uses some double negatives and it makes it hard to understand. The NDL is found on your card right here where I'm pointing in the black. So if you're looking at your card, there is a 40, inside of a black box and it says no decompression limit. So you don't know much about this card yet. You're gonna know in a couple minutes. But if I just go to that 35 feet mark by the word start and I go all the way down and look for that black box. That black box says 205 minutes. So that is actually over three hours actually over three hours. You would run out of air, that would never happen anyway. But you could actually go down to that black box. That is your limit. But again, Miss Mack and I are gonna teach you, don't dive in the black boxes. Do not go to the limits. Um, but that would be what your no decompression limit is there. That is the absolute bottom of it, okay? All right, um, the next one is multi-level hey, Mrs. Dive. Murphy? Yes. Uh, we had our meeting locked, so we have some probably people joining us here momentarily. Okay. Are you able to, you got them? Yeah, I got them. There's just going to be trickling in. Okay. I can't even see any more on here. We'll just take a quick pause, you guys. All right, you good? Yeah. So multi-level diving is not something we are teaching you to do right now because you can't do it with this card. In other words, if you were to go on a dive that starts at 60 feet and then goes to 40 feet and then goes to 20 feet, you actually are gonna get to stay under longer because you're going shallower, but you can't make that plan on this card. There's something called the wheel and then there's again another little computer that you could use, uh, but that's it. So those two things are the only way you could do it. Um, therefore, what we're doing is even if you went on this dive for 30 minutes, okay, this would still be a 30 minute dive for 60 feet. That would be all you can do. And I'm gonna wipe that off now because it's gonna look weird in a minute when we keep going. All right, so multi-level diving is just, you might spend 10 minutes here, six minutes here, and the remainder of time here. And so you're hitting different depths as you go. But again, you cannot plan that on this card. All right, residual nitrogen time or residual nitrogen. 
This is how much nitrogen is left in your body. We assume first dive of the day, there is no nitrogen left in your body other than what is supposed to be there. But when you go diving and breathe on compressed air, you have nitrogen build up in your body. This is one reason why we do a safety stop. It gives you time to let the nitrogen work itself out. So residual nitrogen is just the nitrogen that builds up in your body and is left over at the end of the dive. That is important if you are going to do a second dive on the same day or a third dive on the same day. Um, that will definitely become important in that. Um, just a pause for a minute. Those of you joining us, welcome. Sorry it took you a minute to get you in. Uh, we are recording this, so you will be able to um, go back and see the first uh, about seven minutes of the definitions if you need to. Um, all right, so residual nitrogen time now. That's gonna be a theoretic number. And that is gonna be a number, um, actually it, it's gonna look, it's gonna start as a number and it's going to turn into a letter. And so residual nitrogen time, we are gonna represent as a pressure group. And so it's represented as a letter. And what this is telling us is if you have X amount of nitrogen left in your body, each dive you can go on, the limits are gonna get shorter and shorter. And again, this is to keep you safe. If you have too much nitrogen in your body, ultimately that can lead to which illness? Anybody out there know? Type it in. Oh, we got an answer. Did they get the right answer, Ms. Mack? DCS. All right, decompression sickness. So DCS is one of the, the biggest problem there is the extra nitrogen um, that is absorbing your body. Who got that, Ms. Mack? Shout out. Um, Nate, Tyler, Eloise. I'm sure there was more, but I cut them off. <laughs> nice, good job, you guys. Awesome. Um, right, okay, so let's check where we're at now here on our list. All right, um, total bottom time. So now to get our total bottom time, we're gonna work down here. So let's go back to our dive profile. We already know this is where we're putting our depth, okay? The first thing that we are gonna put here usually is residual nitrogen. And this is our first dive of the day. So we would have a zero here for residual nitrogen. The next thing that goes in this problem is actual bottom time. And if we know we want to go on this dive for 32 minutes, we would literally just put a 32 minute here. Now, this is our first dive of the day. So it very simply is going to be a 30 foot dive. I just made that up for 32 minutes. So total bottom time is this number right here. So again, on our profile, RN is residual nitrogen and RNT, residual nitrogen time. And dive number one, we're gonna have zero. Actual bottom time, 32 minutes, that's, I chose that and that's what my watch set. I went under at eight, came up at 832. And now I'm adding the two together to get my total bottom time. So total bottom time, the formula would be residual nitrogen time plus actual bottom time. So RNT plus ABT gives you TBT, all right? Um, a repetitive dive is simply something that you do on the same day. So some of you have started to figure this out from your projects. You're gonna get in a boat, they're gonna drive you to your first site. You're gonna get geared up, you're gonna go on a 30 foot dive for 32 minutes. You're gonna come out of the water, you and the other 10 divers on the boat. You're gonna change out a tank to a brand new tank. That's why they say two tank dives. Once you do that then, you will get all geared up again and go on your second dive of the day. So repetitive dives are when you do more in one day. Now, that is also stated on the back of our card because a repetitive dive can actually be doing multiple days of diving as well when you consider the flying rule. So, um, let's see, repetitive dives and or multi-day dives 
require a minimum of 18 hours. And those were in our travel rules that you guys did. Again, don't memorize them, look for your answer. And so that you never have to memorize an answer, Ms. Mack and I will always say, give it 24 hours after you fly before you die. It will always be that way. Hold on, Mrs. Murphy. Go ahead. What does the uh, far right side of the diagram say? Right here. Probably, yes. So Are you having trouble seeing that because of the glare? Stop. And again, we don't mark it that way. I just point out that that's where if you look at some tables and um, you're actually going to see it, we have included this worksheet for you. Hope that's in focus. And on this Patty Dive repetitive worksheet where they label all the words and letters too, there is a little dashed line right there. That is your reminder to do that three minute safety stop. But again, I'm gonna tell you that that three minutes is already included right here. So this is just, I want you to be aware that you'll see it sometimes um, on, on the actual dive planning sheets. Any other questions? No, just for the people that were late, maybe make sure you pin Mrs. Murphy so you can see that board. And then send me your questions if you have them on chat. All right, the next thing then is the surface interval. And surface interval now, I just told you about how we're gonna take the boat to one site, we're gonna dive. We're gonna come up, we're gonna drive to another site and dive again, okay? The surface interval is the time that your head is above water again. So at 8.32 when this dive ended, now I get back in the boat, I change my gear, I get some water, maybe a Werther's Original to get the salt water taste out of my mouth. We drive to another site, we get back in the water, and then my head goes underwater again. The surface interval encompasses all that time. The second my head is above water until my head goes underwater again. All right, two more terms. The next one is pressure group, and that is what we're gonna talk about on this car. All right, going back to the right side up. On this side over here, we have pressure groups. And along the bottom, we have pressure groups. We've also got them up on this diagonal. The pressure group, again, is representing the theoretical amount of nitrogen left in our body. It's simply used as a way to plan the dives. And the last one on the definition sheet is a safe diver. And that stands for slowly ascend from every dive. Um, and that you saw on a quiz, I believe it also might be on the final. So uh, before I continue, um, you can go ahead and let me know if you have any questions. You can raise your hand, you can say it to Ms. Mack, and then we're gonna go into actually some dive planning here. So Mrs. Murphy, you might wanna address this one. Um, hold on. Um, the question is about safety stop. Is it always included into bottom time? Yes, we always include it in actual bottom time. So it's already addressed right there. So even when you see a problem where they put that three there, it is already included in this number. It's just the, hey, reminder, don't forget to stop there and hang out at 15 feet. And again, you don't have to stay in one place. You can move around at 15 feet. You just need to keep that depth level. Any other questions? All right, so what I'm asking you to do is to, um, either on your screen or if you got paper, doesn't matter, however you wanna do it, but I'm gonna ask you to have out now the recreational dive planning worksheet number one. It should be labeled number one at the top. It should be worksheet number one. And the first direction for one to four says planning a single depth dive. If you did not print it out, that's fine, but make sure you have some paper right now you can draw on, because we're gonna need that in a minute. And then make sure you have some type of table available. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this down. And no, the Murphy family did not have a massive whiteboard in their basement before coronavirus. 
All right. So we're going to start on the one to four. We're going to start on the um, no decompression limits. And um, you can work with us, as I said. So here's our card. And as we go off of the card, the first question is asking about what color box on here. Well, it's asking about the black box because it says in the question, what is the no decompression limit? And again, I don't have to memorize this. I go back to my card and I see the no decompression limit is always the black box. Now, a few things we need to tell you about this card that you always got to remember. This is not Mr. Virtus's math class or Mr. <laughs> Prop Keys, and we don't talk about rounding like those math crazies do. Okay? We are special in scuba diving and we have our own special rules to rounding. And basically, if you pass the number on the card, you always go up. So let's talk about it for a minute in terms of um, depth. If I were to say the depth of my dive was 38 feet, across the top of the card, you will notice there is no 38 feet. I have to make that dive at 40 feet. If I tell you I want to do a 21 foot dive, type in for Ms. Mack, what is the uh -oh. number you have to round that to? There is no 21 feet on this card. Are they getting it? Do we have any wrong answers? E yeah, just because they're not reading the numbers carefully. Okay, so go to the top of your card. And you may not be able to see them if you're on my card, I get that. The numbers in the top go 35, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, et cetera. So 21 has to get rounded to 35, okay? Now let's do one more. If we say we are at 81 feet, we go up again to 90. If you pass the number, you move up. So, the second thing then we need to look at this is in terms of time, because we know we're gonna give each other time as we do this. So we just worked across the very top where it says start. And now we're gonna work going down because these numbers represent at the beginning here on the left, minutes. So again, it is not, if you go down the bottom, it's not an hour and four, it's 104 minutes. So you've got to make sure all of these you remember are minutes. So if I were to say to you, I want to do a, I'm going to make actually the profile, a 21 foot dive, okay, 21 feet for 33 minutes. And this is actually my TVT. It's my first dive of the day. I have no RNT. So I'm gonna go 21 feet for 33 minutes. I'm going to be in this first column and I'm going to go down and I don't see 33 minutes. I see 32 and 36. I have to go up to 36. And by up, I mean to the next largest number. So really on the card, it's going down. In terms of time, it will go longer, if you will, okay? So those are just two things about rounding that help exemplify why Ms. Mack and I are more special than a math teacher. All right, so what is the no decompression limit for a 45 foot dive? 45 feet is not in our card. We've gotta go over from the start to 50 feet. And now I'm looking for the black box so I go straight down, and my answer there is 140. Wait, did I, uh, oh, 40, 50 feet, sorry. 50 feet, because I had to go round up, and I go straight down, and my answer is 80 feet. I apologize. So 80 feet. The next one is no decompression limit for a 100-foot dive. I simply go to the 100 feet, I slide down and the black box is 
20 minutes. So my answer on number two is 20 minutes. Now go ahead and do number three and four. Unless you have a question, take this moment to type your question to Miss Matt. Otherwise, do number three and four on your own right now. Any questions, Ms. Mack? Nope. All right, that's honestly how numbers one to four, that's how simple they are. So we're gonna go ahead and move on from those. And to the next section, we're at number five. Um, the answers on those that we just did, uh, 40 minutes is number three, and 205 minutes is number four. Again, please remember, it's not two hours and five minutes, it's 205 minutes. All right, so we're gonna go on to number five. And five is asking us now for a pressure group. Pressure groups are letters. We did not show you how to read that yet, but we did tell you what they were, all right? So our first dive, and as I make mistakes going back and forth, just correct me, is 40 feet. And it says 39 minutes, right? Now again, because it's my first dive of the day, nothing should be up here. I don't write that I'm an A diver, I am nothing. That says, that's not the letter X. I want you to remember to leave it blank. 40 foot dive for 39 minutes. We have zero RNT, first dive of the day. So our TBT is 39. So let's go to our card. 40 is on here. So we take the 40 and we're gonna go straight down and look for 39 minutes. 39 is not on here. We have H tells us 37 minutes. We've gotta go down to the 40. And it tells us we are pressure group I. So our pressure group after the dive goes right up at the top of the box. So we are pressure group I. Let's try the next one. 120 feet for 11 minutes. Hundred and twenty feet, eleven minutes. We go over on the card, hundred and twenty feet, we go down to eleven. It's actually on there. We go all the way left. We are a pressure group H. Now I want to point you out something on that one. If you go to that 120 feet and you go to 11, okay, and you see an arrow, that arrow is only if you actually go to 12 minutes. It just means that next box, nothing is there. So keep looking for the next number. But you actually on this one, stop at 11 and move back over to find the H. So go ahead now and try and do, I'm gonna encourage all of you guys, every time you do one of these, to go ahead and actually draw it. You can draw it as small as you want. I mean, it can literally be like that with your pencil. But what drawing it does is it helps you get the information always in the right place. So the next one was 95 feet for 15 minutes. And if you got that one, keep going on to the next three. And this is another good time that if you have a question, shoot that to Miss Math. I see a bunch of questions there. No? No. Okay.
All right, someone want to shoot Miss Mac the answer for number seven? Looks good. All right, so that should be letter J. Number eight should be letter K. Now nine and 10 are both the letter Z. Now again, you can by rule do this die because this is the limit, the no decompression limit. But again, Miss Mack and I are gonna tell you we would not do that die. We're gonna say never dive into that black box. You would still give the answer though because it allows you to do a Z here. So on those last two letter Zs, those would be correct. So again, we have uh, I, H, J, K, Z, and Z. All right, ready to go on? Okay, so the next set of problems um, says find your pressure group after a surface interval. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work in this area. So we're gonna actually be pretending that we're gonna go on two dives today. So again, all it does is it continues on. So the information it gives us now is that we are a G diver. And again, the one I'm on is number 11. It says I'm a G diver. And it says I'm gonna take a one hour, the colons will give me the left side hours, the right side minutes. So one hour and 30 minutes is my surface interval. All right, so this is something new here. Let's get our cards out again. It doesn't matter what the first part of this dive is. We don't need to know that because that's not the question. What they want us to find here is this box right here. So I like to draw it again, so I put everything in the right place. It helps me know what I'm looking for. So it tells me I'm a G. So you're gonna have to go to the G on the card. All right, you're finding the G line. The reason these lines are blue, then white, then blue, then white, are simply so you can track across better. So I'm the G, you can see on mine it's blue. I will follow it all the way across. And I'm gonna start entering the surface interval boxes. If you look to the top right here, it says surface interval credit table. So all of this stuff here, all of these boxes, every box has two numbers in it, two numbers. You are looking for that time to fall in there. So again, I was a G and I gotta go find 130. Now, 130 is not on here. But if you go to the, to the second box from the far right, gotta make sure I'm still a G, still a G, I see 54 to 141. The 54 would be the least amount, the 141 is the most amount, and 130 falls in the middle of that. So that is the box I want. All I'm gonna do at that point now is go straight to the bottom and it now tells me my pressure group was B. Pressure group B. So literally, the answer to that question is B. All right, let's try another one before you go off on your own. It tells us pressure group P. Forty-nine minutes, so we would either have a zero or just the colon and then 49 minutes. So again, none of this matters. Nothing matters over here except the letter P. We're gonna take the P and follow it across into our surface interval boxes, looking for a box that includes 49. We have to go all the way to the box that says 46 and 51. Once we are in that box, we are gonna follow that straight down. And again, we are a letter G. So go ahead, if you got both of those, 
and continue on for a minute and do 13, 14, and 15. And if you did not, or you have a question, type that into Ms. Mack, please. And again, this category is called finding your pressure group after the surface interval. I thought I had an important text and instead I noticed it was just one of my students' moms reaching out to say hi. I'm glad you guys brought your moms and dads with. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, 13, we were an S diver. We only took a five minute surface interval. And I'll tell you guys, that's super unrealistic because before a second dive, you'd always change out your tank. But again, we were an S. We go look for five minutes, the box that says four to six. So we go down and we are an R diver, an R diver. Good work. Any questions on that one for Ms. Mack? Next one, we're in X, and we're gonna go an 80 minute surface interval. So we're X, follow it all the way over. 80 minutes would be now looking for one hour and 20 minutes. So we kind of throw you off on this one a little bit, if you will. So one hour, 20 minutes is in the box of 119 to 126. We go down, we are in F. And then the last one, you were a Q. And you do a three minute surface interval. That is the first box. You are still a Q. You are still a Q. All right. All right. Any questions for Ms. Mack before I move on? All right. We are. Um, getting to, we have two more types of dives to do. It'll probably take us another 10 minutes. Um, and we should have all the way through then this first two worksheets. All right, so now we're gonna go on two dives. So now we need all of this and we gotta start learning how to fill it in. Again, we're gonna start the day with no residual nitrogen, none. So the, I, what I like to tell my students to do is go ahead and try and put the information in first. So what do we know? Well, this is our first dive and this will be our second dive, okay? So as I put my information in, it is a 50 foot dive. It is the first dive of the day. So we have zero RNT and we are going to go for 40 minutes. This is the point, just so you know, that we're gonna start to lose some of you. So stay with this example, because um, this is where if you've been like, well, duh, this is so simple so far, this is where we're gonna start to lose a few of you, just so you know. Now, the other information, we don't know our pressure group yet, but we do know we wanna take a one hour surface interval. And there's our next pressure group. And we know some information for our second dive. We know we wanna go 40 feet. We don't know RNT yet. This is what we're gonna learn right here. This is the part on how to find RNT. Uh, we do know that it is, we want our actual bottom time to be 60 minutes. So we need this. We need this, we need this, we need this. All right, and this one too. So we've got to work across as we go. So let's just do the first part because you know how to do it. 50 feet. First one to type it into Miss Matt. 
50 feet for 40 minutes, what do we become? Well, let me know, Ms. Mack. M, Eloise was first. Yeah, way to go, champ. All right, so we are in M now. So our position is holding right here. We went 50 feet for 40 minutes. 40 was not there. Even though we go to 41, we don't ever write that down anywhere. We just do it on the card, okay? So we're now in M. We know we want a one hour surface interval. So we're gonna follow it across till we can find that. Somebody tell her what we are now, because this is as far as you guys know how to get. What do we got? Yeah, Z, good job. D as in dog. All right, so we're now a D. Okay, what do you notice below that D on my card and your card? There is an arrow there. That arrow is now telling you to flip your card over. That is one of the most important steps, most missed steps. If you follow the arrows, you'll get it, okay? Now, what we have to find now is RMT. And this is what the number one thing students forget. So I wanna go back to what I told you at the beginning. Go on the card and read the key. So if you see where I'm pointing to, I don't know if I'm off the screen there. Right down here, there is, it tells you what the white is and what the blue is. So the white is, white area indicates residual nitrogen time in minutes, okay? And it also needs to be added to the actual bottom time. So it actually tells you what to do with it. So we're talking about dive two. So the two pieces of information we need are right here. 40 feet, so go to 40, and the letter D. And if we go 40 across to D, you get the number. Twenty-five. Yeah, they got it. So twenty-five becomes your RNT here, and again, we know that because we use the key to tell us the white box is RNT. So you got to use the new dive information. Your D forty feet gives you this. Now do the math. This dive now becomes an eighty foot, eighty-five. Um, 85 minutes. So we have to go back now, flip back to the front and plan like you just started using 40 and 85. 40 feet, 85, we are an S. You have now completed every one of the six question marks we had on there to find. Now, before we go to the second one, ask your questions now. And I know she's typing you some of your responses. No questions? Nope. On the back side of the card, you guys, you have to make sure you look very carefully. Use a, a straight edge of a piece of paper or a ruler. Your fingers tend to be too big. Uh, that's how you'll make some mistakes, though, when you start to go crooked. All right, number two. Again, put the facts in first. 60 feet, 30 minutes. That's dive one. We have a surface interval of 30 minutes. Dive two is 50 feet. We don't know this. Is that also 30 minutes? And we gotta find that. 
All right, we're gonna walk through this one. If you've already got it, go ahead and go on and work on your own. But those of you that need another walkthrough, here we go. Card upside down. 60 feet, 30 minutes. We become an L. Follow across. Looking for our 30 minute. That is encompassed in the box of 28 to 34. So we're gonna shoot down. We are a G. We flip the card because the arrow told us to. Our next dive is 50 feet. Go pick up the G. 26. Do that simple math problem. 26 plus 30. Our TVT becomes 56. Back to the front of the card. 50 feet, 56 minutes. It's not there. We got to go down to 57. We end as an R. Now, if you were to go to another dive for the day, you just keep following the exact same pattern. So I'd still have to know my surface interval and then my next one, I would know my next pressure group after that and then I could go down for another dive. Any questions on that? Okay, then what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna ask you guys not right now to go on I'm trying to find out which worksheet you guys have. Everybody caught that I just jumped right into worksheet two without telling you that, right? Um, try to decide what I want to teach you next on worksheet two. What do you think, Miss Mac? One more? Uh, yeah, probably one more. The ANDL? Yeah. And then that's, yep. Okay. All right. So if you did not finish number three or four yet, just stop. You'll be able to go ahead and do that on your own. We'll double check your answers for you. So let's go down to the bottom of this page to number five. Again, let's see what information we have. Let's just draw it out and it tells us after your surface interval. So we know this is where our surface interval always goes. After that, you are an E. You wanna do another dive to 60 feet. So you literally only have two pieces of information, an E and 60 feet. Now we remember that whenever we found this pressure group, it was always at the bottom of the card where it was telling us, flip your card over. So this is where we flip over now. And again, if I can't remember, I'm gonna go read. The blue area indicates adjusted no decompression limits. Now look at the first letter of every word. Adjusted A, N, D, L. So this tells you right here, the blue area indicates your A, N, D, L. It also tells you that actual bottom time cannot exceed that. So we simply go to 60 feet in the blue to letter E, and we get 38 minutes. That's all they're looking for here. That's it. Go ahead and do the next one. And when you get it, type it in for Miss Mac. It's the same exact problem. It 
accept that. Now they make you actually plan it from the beginning. So we know we start at the beginning, first dive of the day, 60, 40, 60, 40 makes us a Q. One hour surface interval. So on a Q, I go over to an hour and straight down. I'm an F. It told me I wanted to do another 60 feet. So now I'm on the back and I'm looking at 60 feet all the way over to the F in blue because I want ANDL. Who's got an answer for Miss Mac? We got a few. 36. Click on the draw. Minutes. All right. Let's do uh, number seven as well, and then I'm going to leave you off on your own for eight and nine. So number seven. All right, following your surface interval, you're a K. So again, they tell you nothing over here, but I know this is where surface interval goes. I'm gonna put a K here. What would your residual nitrogen dive be, time be for a repetitive dive plan to 60 feet? So now it's only asking for this, okay? So we know we're a K after the surface interval. We're gonna flip the card over. We're gonna go 60 feet in the letter K. And what color are we looking for now? Yep, we need white because they told us we are now looking for RNT again. So K and 60. Twenty-nine. So these last two switch you back into the white area. Okay. All right. So on worksheet number two, what we're going to tell you for today, okay, is that any you haven't completed yet, we're going to ask you to do. We're going to ask you to also do number ten and eleven. What these are is it's actually three dives, and it keeps working your way over. We are gonna tell you, do not do 12 to 15 yet. That's something we're gonna hit um, on tomorrow. We'll, we'll talk here in a minute about how we wanna do this, but um, that's, that will be our next lesson. We wanna kind of leave you with this today to chew on and look at, okay? So what I'd like to do right now is open this up for questions, and they can be questions on dive tables, or it can be anything like on scuba, anything we need to talk about with you guys. So Ms. Mack, is there a good way to do that? Um, Did they choose raise their hand? Either way. Well, if they raise their hand, I need to see them. <laughs> no, but they can't click raise your hand. Oh. Uh, Would it not come up on the bottom? No, I don't see it. All right. So oh, uh, can we go over number nine? Number nine. Hold on, I'm trying. My printer's going bad. All right. Uh, following a surface interval, you are a Y. Uh, surface interval, you're a Y. 
What would your RNT be for a repetitive dive plan to 50 feet? All right, let me grab my card. So again, it's after surface interval, always after surface interval, we're on the back. 50 feet as a Y. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> It's not there, is it? So the answer to number nine, is that an exceeds limits, Ms. Mac? Uh, yeah. So your answer should not be some of my former students' favorite answer is you die. Because that's not a given, but it's a bad choice. So the answer should be you exceed the limits or don't do this dive, something to that effect. And those, the person that caught it, if you were not doing it yet, there's nothing in the boxes. And so because of the fact those boxes are blank, says you can't do it. All right, did you get some more questions, Ms. Mack? Nope. All right, so then, um, first of all, we are so thrilled, all of you that joined us today. I will be um, downloading this in a few minutes and putting it onto the same lesson. So now instead of going there and seeing the Zoom and the password, you'll actually see the link to replay it if you need different parts of it, okay? Um, in terms of what else we have, we are going to um, continue on tomorrow and do the next lesson. Um, we'll probably, uh, I don't know, Miss Mack and I will talk. This was super helpful for her to manage the questions um, and for one of us to be teaching. So we'll probably follow a similar format, but we might offer it both days, uh, one on Wednesday, one on Thursday, and see if it, that helps getting it smaller or not. Um, after we're done with dive tables, we need to prepare you for the quiz, or I guess it's called a test. Um, we will be taking the PADI exam, because what that will do is it will have all of the academic work knocked out for you. So if you're thinking like, yeah, I still have to learn pool stuff. Well, yeah, you do. But you will never have to revisit the book stuff if we can get you through in the next, we have 12 months to get you through. So that's the importance of why we want you guys ready to take the test and just be done with it. The test is gonna be 50 questions. Um, it is Patty style, they wrote it. It will be done on Canvas, um, I believe. I don't think we'll switch over to yep. Mastery Manager. No, it's ready to go. Okay. Um, and then there are, there is a 10 question dive table part of it. So we have to get you to get an 80%. You got to get a 38 out of 50. And then you got to get an eight out of 10. And the, the one or two things we left out today is also on the test. We looked before today, so we knew. Um, the, the next thing is hard and you can look at it and see if you can figure it out, but it is challenging and needs a little instruction. Um, then the last week pretty much will wrap up or so somewhere in there. We'll give you time to study and we will be writing a, um, I believe it's a two page summary of your travel project. We are mixing um, some big parts of that. We just wanna summarize what you planned and have a couple questions for you to answer. So that'll look different than what you might have had a friend or a peer in the past do. Um, we're definitely not doing it exactly the same. In terms of the summer diving, um, I know I sent an email to all of you and your families. Um, we told you June does not look good. We don't know if the whole summer looks good or not. Um, but our promise to you is a couple things. As I said, you will have one year to do it. If you are taking scuba two next year, fine. We, you be there. It doesn't matter where we're at right now. Um, if you are not, but you still want to get certified, we will communicate with everybody. The hardest group for us to communicate with will be seniors that want to get certified if we can't do it by August. So you guys know where to find us. And if you want us to keep you on the loop, they will eventually eliminate your LTHS um, email addresses. So you will need to get your teacher an email address that you check. Um, and we can, we can retain your parents' one. Obviously, that's not a school one. Um, but we're still on a wait and see. But we, will, we, have, we have friends. We have people. We have places to send you. 
we will, if we can get this done, we will. Uh, we can dive all the way, what, Miss Mac? Halloween? Yeah. 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 And honestly, like, Halloween's not much colder than going in June. So, that sometimes has the whole it's warmer. Right. So, we just kind of want to give you an update on that. We will keep you in the loop. Um, we just, as everything else, we don't have any answers right now. So, anybody have any other questions for us? Those of you that joined us today, um, you can literally just the couple we didn't finish, you could literally just in the box type in those answers and we can tell you if they're right or not. You could also submit a picture of it like you've done in the past. You can do it either way. Um, but we know how many we answered and how many we didn't today. So whatever's easiest for you, that's fine. Um, if we could also ask you guys if you have any feedback on today, um, how we can make it better over the next few days, um, anything that makes it easier. We are more than willing to kind of do a, a small Zoom, like just open it up for anyone that needs to come in for like almost like table tutoring, where we could just literally talk through it. We're open to that too. So I would just ask that either in your box today on your assignment or in um, an email to us, please let us know how we can help you the most. And I'm gonna make one more call for any questions, comments. Nothing. It was nice to see your faces. Oh, I see Henry. I switched you guys over. Oh, do you need to submit anything today, Mrs. Murphy? Um, if you want to know the right answers to the couple we never said, I want to give you a chance. Those of you guys that were a little bit behind, I want to give them a chance to actually do them. So yes, you can um, submit the ones you want answers to. Um, otherwise, if you'll just give us a little response of that was good or that helped or what your recommendation would be that would be better, um, you can just respond that way. We don't, if you were here, we don't need the worksheet, uh, whatever works for you. All right, we miss you guys. I told uh, Eloise last week, I've never wanted to jump into an ice cold pool so bad in my life before. Um, and I'm sure you guys are the same boat. Um, lastly, just in those emails or those messages, anything we can help you with. If you've got feedback, you want to go somewhere, shoot it to us. We got, we got a little, little, little bit of power, um, but we can get feedback to the right people too. So miss you guys and hope to see some of you over the next couple of days. But again, know that we'll pop the video up if you can't make the times that we go on. All right, have a good day. And I think you probably need to end it and then I can upload it. And then I'll talk to you. I'll, I want to check on them upstairs and then I'll talk to you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye.